Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fights Clean, Sex, Dirty TV. And RelationshipFunandGames.com. Raj and Gabby here, and we are here to talk about how to keep the sex dirty as it starts. Yes. And we're joined here by our beautiful, wonderful guests, Rob mm -hmm. and Renee. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about them in just a moment. But first, just just remind you how the show the show is going to go, what the flow is, what you can expect. But first of all, thank you so much for being here. We know that it takes something in your busy lives to come and not work on your relationship, but play on your relationship. We promise we're going to give you really awesome tips tonight. We've got some good stuff. Rob and Renee have got some great stuff. And we're even going to give you some opportunities to find out more afterwards. So if you, uh, you may be new to our show, so we'll just tell you a little bit about how we organize our content. So we have, someone gave us the advice when we were getting married. Was that like at our wedding ceremony? It was at the wedding. It was the reception. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember who said it. But they came, yeah. they came up to us and said, all you need to know is keep the fights clean and the sex dirty. And I was like, hmm, what I, does that mean? <laughs> I instantly thought to myself, oh, save being nasty for your sex life. Yeah. And then when we started to ask couples what is it that they were struggling with, that you pretty much can narrow down to those two categories, how to not lose it in your arguments and how to keep it happening in your physical and your passion and your relationship. Yeah, and who knew that some years down the line we would start this company called Relationship Fun and Games and have a product called How to Keep the Fights Clean and the Sex Dirty. Now we want you to be able to find the top tips that are most applicable to exactly what's going on in your relationship. So as you know, each week we switch between how to keep the fights clean and the sex dirty, and then we also drill down into before or as it starts, during, and after, and tonight we're going to be talking about how to keep the sex dirty as it starts. So this is all about seduction, tantalizing, tempting, teasing. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one. But let's tell you a little bit about Rob and Renee first. Okay. So Rob and Renee, I know I'm jumping in again. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, we're sorry. working on me. You know, I am Gabby, but <laughs> we're practicing him getting a word in edgewise on these things. We've got a few little hand symbols we've been using, little cues under the, under the table. We can <laughs> and communicate. You just let me know, honey. We're doing great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just so excited about having Rob and Renee on the show. You know, I've known Rob longer than Renee, but the second I saw the two of you together, it was like, oh yeah, game on. <laughs> and it was at uh, either the wedding or just after the wedding, the workshop, the WEDX workshop um, in Toronto with Scott and Sasha. And the two of you just it was like, you know, sometimes you see a new couple and they're googly eyes, but they don't, it's not really grounded. They're just kind of caught up in it. It was so deep. You had the googly eyes, but it was so deep and grounded. And we just knew this was long lasting. And right after I felt that, Rob, is when you said, I'm moving to Detroit. <laughs> and I don't know, has it been two, three years now since you moved? Yeah, moved to So why don't you tell us you know, just a bit about yourselves and how you came to be a couple before we dive into all this great content. I love that description. I think that's I think that's really appropriate. Um, I'm still googly eyed, you know. I'm still, <laughs> and uh, and there's just something really special about who she is and how she shows up. And it's it's kind of one of our tips, uh, being with the right person. You know, it's like she's <laughs> awesome, and it feels really really uh, deep too. I know exactly what you're talking about with that whole feeling of it being. Uh, like new or temporary or something like that. This is from the very beginning felt really profound and I very trustable and real and, and deep and yeah. What's um, what's also interesting about our relationship is we Rob is from Philly. I'm from Detroit area and we fell in love essentially over Skype. And so <laughs> we had met once prior to that, but I was married. He was in a in a, another relationship and so it was completely business and a kind of a brief yeah. you know encounter and um, you know I was dating other people when we were skyping and you kind of were too and and we started falling madly in love and had never kissed and never really been in person in that way. So. It was really cool. It was almost yeah. like um, it was like I was, you know, in the olden days living in France and she was living in Spain and we were like writing these letters back and forth and it really it ended up um, like we had to really like each other and love each other and we would stay up late and share music and we ended up like every night staying on for 
hours at a time. And in the beginning of that, she was totally dating other people, and I would be like, I really genuinely like wanted her to go have fun because I knew I was like falling in love with her, but it wasn't a possessive thing. It was like I just just go have a blast, like have fun and all that. And then I somewhere in the middle there just sort of knew I don't want to see other people. Like I'm not asking you to do that, but I can just kind of tell I'm bored of uh, dating these other people, so I'm I'm just gonna stop and whatever. And then pretty soon after, she decided to stop. And this is all before we'd even like had a kiss, right? This is all before we'd even <laughs> met in person. It was all done over Skype, so it was. I'd never had anything like that before. That was really unique and and kind of weird and uh, and very very special. And then it led to this beautiful kind of meeting in New York where we. Um, it was even better in person because I know I was nervous. Like, is this going to be real? Like when we. Yeah, get... I, was, I was. like, what if he smells? Yeah. You know, or there's some weird. <laughs> like, what if, what if the, like pheromones are right, or if she's horrible at kissing, or right? Or yeah, something. but it turned out to be even. It was more even incredible. better, right? Yeah. So yeah, it was even better, and and um, and it just it sort of hasn't stopped, which is amazing, and I feel so grateful for it, and and uh, um, yeah, like I, it's amazing. It's just amazing. Well, so. It's obvious that you guys have something special, which is why I invited you to be on the show tonight. You know, I know you both speak to audiences and you're in the coaching and helping and health and vitality realm in many in many different dimensions. But the two of you as a couple, I hadn't heard you speak before, but just seeing the two of you together is palpable. And I know you have so much to contribute and to share, so I just am really glad that you joined us tonight to dive into this topic. You know, sometimes yeah. we have experts, and sometimes we have, um, you know, couples, and sometimes the couples are experts, but we really like to stick as much as possible to having couples because it's the it's the in-between space. Yeah, between like, the two. like, Rob, when we started, you leaned over and you gave Renee a kiss, you know, on the side mm -hmm. of her forehead. You know, it's yeah. those kinds things that you're you're modeling, you know, that people are seeing even if you're not speaking about them. So yeah, there's also a lot of work out there for the male or the the woman, the man or the woman, but uh, there's some work out there for the couples, but we're really trying to put a new face on that couples work. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Now, we do want to just point to the slide here for a minute because, you know, I introduced you and we heard your story and we love hearing these love stories, but I want people to know just a little bit about your background. You know, Renee, I love what you're doing with Love Yourself Naked, you know, being a coach and a writer and a speaker. Um, do you want to say just a few words about what Love Yourself Naked is? Yeah, absolutely. Well, as the name implies, there's something kind of promising afoot. You know, it's a it's a big promise. And the idea behind loving yourself comes down to really growing your self-esteem and being intuitively connected with your body. And that comes through our relationship with food. It comes through our relationship with, our, our obviously, our body and ourself <coughs> and others. And then I also do quite a bit of work in the addiction arena, so to speak. So sometimes that's a, I have a program on sugar addiction called Winning the Sugar Game. And also a lot of that is being addicted to the mind and the things that keep us disconnected from ourselves. It's really a lot and of she, fun. She actually and does a lot of stuff with the sugar one. <laughs> I've been eating a lot of chocolate chips at night. <laughs> Dark organic. <laughs> I'm totally talking over everybody. I just wanted to add that she does a lot of stuff with relationship too, which is yeah. amazing. So this ability to kind of love yourself so that you can relate really healthily. And, and yeah, one thing I I'll say is um, I probably I have like I don't know if it's eight or ten different people who have come to work with me and then found the love of their life and soulmate or you know fill in the blank afterward. And so it's you know one of those things when you really get connected and truly love yourself, that person can be attracted much easier. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, absolutely. If you yeah. don't love yourself, why should anybody else, right? I mean, yeah. you're 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 probably gonna be the person who has the highest stock for yourself. So, you know, loving yourself is a great, great step and naturally would attract, you know, another level of a relationship. Yeah. And we do actually have a lot of people that have been calling in for the show that aren't in relationships, but they're being proactive, which is our whole message, you know, get ahead of things, don't wait for problems. We had one woman from the UK with five kids as a single mom saying, I'm getting ready for the next relationship yeah. and joining us. Yeah. Um, you want to tell a little bit about Rob? Uh, well, I'd love to hear tell have Rob tell us a little bit about yeah, it. I, <laughs> Raj, for Raj, Raj, I got to give her a little praise, right? I mean, we don't want to cut Rob short on any of the praise oh, here. No. Raj, please go ahead and and uh, and tell everyone. <laughs> you know, um, 
No, I, I am, you know, I'm trying to work with, um, you know, ending suffering and limiting beliefs on our planet. And where I do my work is in this uh, idea of helping people shift their identity. And the, the premise behind that is that any really profound change requires uh, a change in your self-concept, right? So um, I, I'm kind of a belief hacker. I go in and I, I work with how people are making meaning, and I optimize that. And rather than asking them to... Um, to think different thoughts, I teach them how to think differently. So it's a, a bit meta, and it really heals past traumas and wounds, and it optimizes uh, useful thinking going forward, and it just uh, produces really, really profound results. And I'm incredibly proud of what I'm up to and, and, uh, and completely dedicated to it. I'm just I'm lucky enough that I get to be in my purpose every minute of every day, pretty much. So it's mm -hmm. amazing. Is a mana tree. Beautiful. Yeah. Performance limiting box honey. You should uh, yeah, rap with Rob about, about that sometimes. Raj did this whole <laughs> long piece for a while on performance limiting boxes. Some really cool graphics on it too. You guys would probably geek out on I limitations and how to bust yeah. through them. And Let's of course talk. that applies to relationships, you know, limitations, especially, mm. you know, with intimacy and all of the societal conversations about, you know, shame and you know, there's just so many layers to unpack around sensuality and sexuality. So yeah. we're glad that that you're here to help us do that tonight. We'll go ahead and dive in and transition to this topic. Um, I just wanted to point out uh, just a couple of resources from previous seasons. So we're in our third season, this <coughs> is the season of passion. We've already had our season of play and our season of peace, and we'll be doing all three of those seasons every year. But for the last couple of seasons, you can go ahead and check out uh, season one had Alex Allman for this particular topic. Mm. And this is the only interview that I was not a part of. Yeah, Gabby was in France. We were on a, a little trip with a, a bunch of our friends, and I came back early, and Gabby stayed. It was Nathan's 50th. You know Nathan, yeah. Rob, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Alex and I had an awesome time, completely blew my world and then Gabby's world. And then I came home and the next night after a decade together we had the hottest, sexiest <laughs> yeah, time. I was like, who are you? In like the middle of fooling around I was like, Alex, that was some interview. Yeah. I don't know. That's so awesome. That's definitely a thumbs up on that interview. And then also you know Brian Franklin and Jennifer Russell and as in our audience if you don't know them, they are an extraordinary couple. Um, their love is so powerful that it's been captured in this painting called Union. This just now I see people, someone just posted on Facebook, they had the painting made into a t-shirt that they're wearing. And they um, had some great tips, you know, one on plus one-ing. Um, they have so many really specific fun things. So if you're hearing some great stuff tonight, but if you're digging and you're wanting some more, we encourage you to go to the episode library and you can check out those previous seasons. And that's on our Fights Clean Sex Dirty portion of our website. Yep, yeah, you can go to relationshipfunandgames.com and find it that way. And you'll also find the blogs there for these topics. Now, you can always find this logo, look for this one. In this case, the Sex Dirty is the heart with the horns on it, and the As It Starts, you know, is, is shaded in there. So to make it really easy when you're looking for stuff to find exactly what you're looking for. In fact, the blog that was the blog that I wrote on this topic was about how sex is a lot like an acid trip. <laughs> and that, as they say, uh, set and setting are crit of critical importance. Um, so a lot of fun stuff there. But let's get into our tip for tonight. And Rob and Renee, please feel free. I'm sure you have some, uh, you know, some experience with this tip we're about to share, so feel free to jump in. And then we'll wrap up our tips, and we want to hear from you on all these great things that you have been doing in your relationship and sharing with other uh, relationships as well. So let's dive in. Yes. Booty before brekkie. Booty before brekkie. Yes. Okay. So this is one of Raj and our new games that we've been playing in the last couple of years, Booty before brekkie. And just, you know, a complaint that we hear with a lot of couples is timing. I mean, Rob and Renee, you have a six-year-old. I know Renee is your son from a previous relationship, but you're both living together and parenting him. And so finding the time, you know, you're working and running businesses, you know, getting into the mundane day-to-day -day of life, but, you know, how do we find time? You know, how do we find time for each other? And one thing we've discovered, both on our own, and then when I started doing a lot of research, there's a lot of science behind why it's great to have sex in the morning. So I've got all of our reasons, but anything you guys want to say about booty before brekkie as a timing? <laughs> um, it's one of my favorite things. I, I love it. I usually wake up very, uh, uh, you know, ready to go, excited, happy. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's, 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 you know, I, I feel like I have 
way more energy. Like at the end of the day, it's it's tough, and it's one of the ones where I think a lot of times sex can really kind of be its own event, where you have the time and the care to do extra stuff and all these things. Booty before brekkie is not always that. It's usually a little bit more, you know, uh, let's just do this and have fun really fast, and before you know somebody else gets up and all this other stuff. And uh, but it's a, uh, it's one of my favorite things. I love it. I do too. Yeah, I do too. I say yes, ladies. You know, I think that that's a big thing <laughs> here. It's like the guy rolls over, you you feel his energy, right? You know that he wants some. Sometimes it's not always the guy, but um. You know, it's she sleeps. It, she sleeps more deeply than I do, so I'm usually I like I hibernate before, basically. Yeah. I sleep really. So this strongly. is me, like you know, hey, <laughs> do, do you want to get up? You know, hey, like, hey, yeah, hey. what's up? You know, yeah. like yeah. But what, certainly with a child, um, it's it's easier in the morning before people have woken up. So that's that's definitely a yeah. Thing. And I I don't know why I'm thinking right now, but like some people, I think. Um, have this idea that, you know, well, you've got morning breath, you've got whatever. What's awesome about her, uh, none of that is, like, she never has bad breath in the morning. Like, none of that's unattractive to me. I literally, I'm kind of, this is, it might make me sound a little bit weird. I will almost every morning kind of stare at her for a little while while she's Aww. sleeping. She's, she's, like, stunning. And it's, it's do. you know, she does, like, fun things with her arm over her head. And, you know, she just, like, and she's out and it's so peaceful and, uh, and she's super hot, so I'm always kind of like really like uh, adoring and appreciating, and so sometimes that leads to like, hey, <laughs> hey. hey, what's up, lady? How you doing? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and so I, booty before I, I, breakfast. I, 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 uh, Gabby, she's like, she she's often like, but I have morning face, and I'm like, you're so freaking hot and attractive, you know. He loves morning my morning face. face. <laughs> you know, for me it's not the a breath. I'm like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm not yeah. awake yet. Well, there's actually a lot of really awesome science and reasons behind <laughs> why booty before brekkie is so good for us. So, you know, but first if we back up to like what the challenge is, you know, the most common, you know, there's a wide variety of challenges in, you know, a, a sexually intimate relationship, but often it's that it's getting stale or predictable or boring or there's no time, one of those two elements. Mm. But, you know, a great relationship, as Raj and I like to say, wonderful is worth it. And it's just way too good to give up on. In fact, being the season of passion, Raj and I, we just created our goals around passion. And we created about five goals is just in the last few days on passion. Like we're really leaning in and playing because, you know, we have been married almost eight years now, together ten. And when we went into the seventh year of marriage, we said, okay, you know, the cliche is the seven-year itch, right? You guys have heard this. Yeah. You know, the seven-year itch, and that's when people, you know, the infidelity comes in. Or, I mean, if that's even an issue, some people, it's not an issue these days. Um, but the itch for something, you know, you're dissatisfied. You start pulling away, spending more time with your friends. And so Raj and I decided, what do we want to create the seven-year itch for? Yeah, what do we want to itch for instead mm -hmm. of... Like what is that? What's missing, and let's create that in our relationship instead of looking somewhere else for it, right? Yeah, and not even missing, but just like let's like rather than fixing, but what's what's out there? What do we want the itch for? And so we created an itch for having our seventh year be all about best ever sexy time. We call it. <laughs> and so we made a commitment that not every time you have sex is the best ever, but at least once every ninety days, we've had the best sex we've ever had. Wow. And so. It's a game worth playing, right? Yeah. And some people are like, oh, you're so specific or intentional or this or that, but we don't do a lot of effort. It's just a little bit here and there. In fact, at one point we brainstormed, what are the conditions for best ever sexy time? Yeah. You know, we met you through Eben Pagan, and Eben would talk about success being this emergent quality, right? That you can't create the conditions, you can't create success, only the conditions for success. Yeah. It's the same with best ever sex. Yeah. You can't create best ever sex, but we have brainstormed these conditions. And putting in some of these conditions whenever you can to kind of up the, the odds of that happening is yeah. not that difficult to do. And as it says it says here on the page, it's way too good to give up on. Yeah. Right? What are those what are some of those conditions? Because I want to like whip my pen out and take some notes. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, for one, it might be time. Like we find some of our best evers are like when we have like a good three to five hour, yeah. you know, window on a Sunday afternoon. Um, that we have privacy, that we don't, we know that no one else is going to come. You know, we live in a, a place where there's a, usually other people around. So creating a either going away or finding some way to have some space together. Yeah. Um, some of them are uh, even what we do after sex. We have what yeah. we call the um, post. Uh, the romp the, recap. The romp recap, and yeah. uh, it's all about EBIing your sex life. You even know? better ifing, right? Even better ifing your sex life, and if you do that. Even you know once or twice, um, you can very quickly escalate the the levels of satisfaction in your sex because you're actually talking about it in a safe format. So. Yeah, we score ourselves on intimacy, sexiness, and technique. Wow! So that we're making it, you're making talking about sex. You can't do it within the first hour. That's the post orgasmic chill. But <laughs> after that. <laughs> After that, within an hour to 24 hours, you wanted to be as comfortable as like, hey, what did you think of that movie last night? Well, that was good, but I didn't really like the restaurant. Let's not go there next time. And just yeah. make it really easy and comfortable to talk about. And you're really co-creating how you want it to be instead of you know pointing out what was wrong or lacking. You're creating how you want it to be together. Yeah, you're not scoring each other together. You're saying, what did you think? How was that in intimacy? Well, I might give it an eight. Oh, really? I kind of gave it more of a seven and a half. Well, if I had a little more eye contact, that would have made a difference. So it's that. It's that gives you that kind of entree and that map. Uh, but one of the things, you know, as we were talking about is time. So having some time, making time. So that's why morning time can often be a good time. For one, you're already there. You don't have to seduce anybody to get them into bed, right? And you're not exhausted, hopefully, or at least as exhausted as you were when you went to sleep. Now, I will point out that biologically there actually is a crisscross of when, because women, they're normally, this is a generalization, but women, they generally, um, their peak of hormones for their sensual excitement is uh, around 9 p.m. And for men, it's much earlier in the morning. Yeah. So 4 p.m. Yeah. is actually the, the peak crisscross where both hormones are highest. So that's why I put on this list here. I don't know, Raj, can they see the slide right now? Oh, they can't. Great. Is, hey, hey, afternoon delight, if you remember <laughs> that song. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so a little afternoon delight is a lovely, lovely piece, but the booty before brekkie. Raj, will you go to the, the next slide for me? Sure. I wanted to check in with Renee. What do you think about... What do you notice for your sex drive? Does it follow that uh, that research of wanting more in the evening? <laughs> I want to. I want to answer that. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Here's two thoughts come to mind. Um, one, it's a little bit month. It's it depends on the time of the month for me too. So based on where my hormones are at, I'm intuitive a little bit that way. Like, okay, this week is probably not going to be as much as this week, but um. I think I think I would say later in the day probably but the the key here also is when I wake up I feel the most present. You know, mm -hmm. like there's not a lot of thoughts running through my brain, nothing's really happened and so I feel like that also makes an easier segue for me to be open in my body and receive and all of that. So I like that too. Mm. Yeah. Nice, Rob. Did you want to answer that question as well? <laughs> I just want to say. I mean, one of the one of the really neat things about Renee is that she's. Um, I mean, she's very sensual and she's a very sexual person, and and uh, she's she's really always uh, open to it and fun. And you know, I think there's a lot of stereotypes where you know the woman's doing the I have a headache thing, and uh, she's never uh, she's never denying that for me or doing anything. She's always game, and she's very. Uh, uh, just open and, and loving and, and you know, game. And, and I'll, I will say this, I haven't always been that way in past relationships either. You know, that there's a there's certainly a connection that you find and um, finding that right person that you can feel really, really good with. It yeah. just, it, when the spark is there, yeah, you know. Yeah, it kind of clicks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as I mentioned before, we met, you know, through Evan Pagan and Evan and Annie. They have one of their wedding vows. I just love this wedding vow. They say, "Anything you ask for with a pure heart, the answer is yes." Mm. And so it's just this, and you know, on her wall, their wall, she has the big yes on the wall. And so just it's naturally being a yes. Whoever is initiating, I really try not to say no, and not just about sex, but about pretty much anything, unless it really doesn't work. And Raj has really recently, we, we use numbers, like how bad do you want this? That's a really good thing. 
this yeah. number system. And so now, you know, the other night, for example, Raj likes to take a lot of showers, and we, we, we call it our water conservation program. It's just a way to reset at the end of the day, so we'll jump in the shower together. Yeah. But he's much more into it than I am. So the other night, he was walking up the stairs, and he's like, you know, I'm only a six or seven, but it would be nice to have you join me. I yeah. thought about it it's a fine lot. fine if you don't want to. We decided that anything that is a nine or higher, you really should just say yes to no matter yeah. what. But, and if you, you, we've had experiences where I've said no or she said no to a nine or a ten, and you get a sense of what the repercussions of that are. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, anything lower, price than a, to pay. <laughs> lower than a six is kind of like, you know, whatever you want is fine with me. So I'm like, okay, what number will express my desire plus give her the flexibility to say no. Yeah. And so, you know, 7, 7.5. Yeah. And she actually said yes because she knew how much I thought about how to frame the question. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. It was really it was his flexibility. Like, if he had said, I really want you to do it, I might have gone and like, well, I really kind of don't unless he really, really wanted me to do it. But that openness of, you know, there's this pureness of like, you don't have to. I want you to do what you want to do, but I would really love to do this. You want to come play with me? Yeah. And that spirit is so inviting. In fact, even when Raj is trying to give me, um, f you know, feedback about something that wasn't working, he asked me a few months ago, like, so how should I tell you something that I'm kind of feel like is a complaint? And I said, treat it like a game and say, I know, let's play a game. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So this is a different, my booty before brekkie is, I know, let's yeah. play a game. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, I'm noticing that that, that uh, attitude of saying yes is it's kind of the core of improv as well, right? It's it's taking whatever the concept concept is and saying yes and right. So um, I love that relationship improv. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's a way to to you know not and like it, when you shut down anything, there's a there's a, there could be a real break in in energy and flow, and so if you can you know, sort of say yes and, right? And what the underlying idea also is there's a space that feels safe for you to ask for what you want because, mm -hmm. you know, often um, in relationships sometimes we don't think that we can ask for what we want. We expect the other person to know and, you know, that's where we run into trouble. Yeah. So I like that. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, true. Uh, yeah. And as you flex that muscle of expressing what you want and the person says yes more often than not, you start developing this um, different level of relating where you can feel like your needs can be met if you make a request instead of being afraid to request because you're going to get no. Yeah. Well, often the dynamic we get into because we're all so you know, stretched and tired is you know, I feel unappreciated <laughs> and I don't feel taken care of. And if you can shift that cycle and start being good to each other, doing the little things, like he plugs my phone in at night so it's charged. Mm -hmm. you know, it's these little things that we start feeling this goodwill so that when you're waking up it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. It's like, yes, let's, you know, I want this connection. I want to say yes in general and I want this connection. Well, let me just say a couple other things about Booty Before Brecky okay. and then we want to turn it over to you. I know we've got some great wisdom from your relationship. You gave us a little nugget earlier with uh, with with be with the right person, we call that choosing wisely. That was the very first relationship tip we ever came up with. The <laughs> yeah. first time we ever spoke, we said, "Before you ask us any tips, choose wisely." Yeah. So, so we'll get right to that. But um, you know, just you know, a few points here. I, I love this idea. It takes on new meaning now for this breakfast of champions. Don't skip breakfast, but you know, because you do, of course. You know, we have you know our health expert here as well, uh, Renee. But you don't want to skip breakfast. But why not start your day with this other kind of meal, so to speak, that nourishes you in a completely other way? You're there. Um, it's rocket fuel, not just for your relationship, but your body itself. Um, you know, as Dr. Oz says, you should have a, at least an orgasm every other day. It's actually healthy and good for you, whether it be stress release. Um, also, in the morning, you don't have an opportunity yet to um, be worried, as you were saying, Renee, worried about things or challenged or distracted. You're kind of in this soft dream space. Um, and there is no need to get dressed up. You know, when you're thinking about looking great or this or that, you got the excuse. It's morning. <laughs> I like to uh, preface uh, or represence what Rob said earlier that uh, we're more hot in the morning anyway. Like, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> right, Rob, you were saying how hot that Renee looked in the morning. Yeah. Uh, there's something about getting a good night's sleep and then just being there. It just makes the other It just makes sexy. sense. Yeah. yeah, and it just is it is. You just makes sense. Yeah. Now when I talk about a sexy twist here, this is something that Raj and I do because sometimes we actually like to wake up first. Um, so we'll wake up, 
we'll go work out, we'll take a shower, then we'll jump back in bed, and we'll have booty before brekkie, and then get up and have brekkie. <laughs> but really, just it's a way of just waking up the body, and you know, for, for some personality types, they're very, very physical. So you can go straight into that, but sometimes we have found that it's really fun to get up, exercise, stretch our bodies so that we really you know, can move. And then dive back in for exercise round two, right? And yeah, and get that. fun, fun, flirty, and feisty, as we say here. So that's it for me for booty before breaking. Anything you guys want to add before we we jump into uh, the right person and all the other great tips? No, I think it's I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. let's dive in. Be good. Well, then let me just lastly point out the action option, because as uh, if you've watched this before, you know we don't like to give you a tip without encouraging you to take action. You don't have to take this action, but take some action. Remember, just a little bit of that intention, attention, and action will go a very long way. So just a couple of simple steps here. You know, one, just talk to your partner about booty before brekkie. Are they excited about it? Are they not a morning person? Do you need to find out how to make the on-ramps, you know, a little bit easier to access? You know, what's 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 the way to win your partner over? Raj knows morning, noon, or night, Raj, what's the number one way to win me over? The number one way to win you over in terms of it's, sex it's a, yes. evening. Yes. Yeah. Anytime. What's what what what's what's the number one thing to do? Say that I've got you. No, that's the number two thing. <laughs> no, I mean physically. Ah, uh, the, 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 the neck. The neck. Too. It's always the neck. If I'm <laughs> sleeping, if I'm standing there doing the dishes, you know, a one soft kiss right on the right spot on the neck is I'm completely weak in the knees. That's my kryptonite. I felt like I was on that dating show. What that show is called, where they ask couples <laughs> things you're supposed to know about your partner at the dating club. <laughs> <laughs> like Here's your second answer there. Yeah. yeah. So just find out how they feel about it, and you know, see if they're on board for you know what we're calling this game worth playing. And then, as I said, look at what are the hurdles, what are the concerns, you know, one person might be more excited than the other. Again, sometimes women are more turned on in the evening. You might, you know, mix that up, but, you know, just play, play around with it, with how you can make it more exciting for the person that it's not necessarily so exciting for, but hopefully you're both excited about this. And then you want to brainstorm how are you going to reduce or remove those hurdles. Now you know what they are. What are you going to do to put them in place? You know, Raj and I would call these a passion practice. You know, it might be like, if you have little kids actually locking the door when you go to sleep. You know, that might be a big deal for some people. Uh, but whatever it might be that has someone feel more relaxed about waking up and getting it on in the morning. It might be having a glass of water right by your bed so at least you can wake up and take a glass of water and clear out your mouth if that makes you feel more comfortable. But step four is the most important. Whatever you do, just jump in, enjoy some of that booty before brekkie because, you know, what a way to start your day. You know, you're going to be at work, you know, a few hours later or however later, however much later, and just, I love that grin on your face. You know, when you get it on before you go out to a dinner party or something, you know, when you get it on in the morning and then you go out, it's just this kind of this, like, I got a pep in my step and a secret in my pocket and I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, and then also you can check out the blog article. Uh, you can see the URL here, relationshipfundinggames.com, booty before brekkie, where Gabby uh, really goes into some depth about this topic. I'm imagining, honey, we've declared it before, but I'm just imagining now one day you're just kind of whispering in my ear, booty before brekkie. Okay, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> maybe tomorrow. Let's so see. These shows are really great at inspiring new levels of passion, play, and peace in our own relationship, too. So, Raj, why don't you go to the next slide? But, uh, Robin, Renee, you know, we, we've been loving your, your addition so far, but uh, let us turn it over to you. What would you like to share to all these couples that are listening and, and even single people to have their relationships be playful, peaceful, and passionate? Do you want to? Let, let yeah. me just say to the audience uh, the Join the Hangout button is now active. So, if you want to join us live in the Hangout, just hit the refresh button on your browser and then you can click on the Join the Hangout button and jump right on in here with us and ask us questions. And, and I love it. That's so cool. I love it, too. Yeah, yeah, ask away. I What comes to mind first is confidence is super hot. You know, so, um, you know, just, and that always doesn't, I, I, it doesn't always flow naturally in moments, but I find that we can switch the confidence on when we need to, right? We, when We've all been in situations where, we need to turn it on, mm -hmm. and so find a way to turn turn that on for your partner, for yourself, and um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that. I, I guess you can maybe chime in. But yeah, I, I think you know when we were thinking about what we wanted to share here, 
there's the real, and we have some like actual tips for like exactly when you're seducing and all that. But for me, what's a precursor to that are some kind of basic things that are important to have in place. And we started with like being with the right person, right? Um, we we can gloss over that. We can say that's super important. But like to me, that was so important because I found myself in various relationships where it really wasn't there, and there was a part of me in my brain that knew it wasn't there. And I was like trying to be the good guy and I was trying to make it work. And I have a lot of clients come to me and they'll be like, you know, the passion's not there. What should I do? And there's a part of me that wants to have people have a confidence about themselves and a, and a self-love and a, and a way of being where they almost insist that, you know, there's this better thing that can exist. And I got to a point in, in a, a former relationship where I was like, you know what, I'm going to be okay even if I have to be alone forever because I'm, this isn't what I need it to be. And then when I met Renee, it was it was so great that now I really, when I say I'll be with the right person, what I'm trying to do is advertise that there's a possibility to find something really, really exceptional. And for me, it was important to care enough about myself uh, to fight for that and to wait for that, right? And that I would, I would prefer to almost not have anything instead of that. And, and so, um, you know, I have a history of coming from uh, sexual abuse and having a lot of shame and a lot of difficulty around uh, sexuality. And so after finding the right person, and by that I mean like she's got pheromones that I'm just into. Like she's never mm -hmm. unattractive to me. You know, there's when the first time um, she kind of took off her clothes and, and we'd been falling in love over Skype but nothing had happened and now I'm with her she turned me into like a leg guy like I've never been a leg guy before but like <laughs> like her legs were so awesome I was like oh my god what's happening to my head right now like I was, I was out of my mind. like the cartoons like, and the eyeballs popping out <laughs> totally it, it, it was like that because I could see myself in a mirror and I watched my own face go like this and she's not looking at me and I literally was going what's going on right now because like it was the whole thing you know and I think guys do that we sort of go I really like her breasts, or you know, oh, her face is really hot, but whatever. And I just won't look at that. Like everything here was amazing, and and it was, and and who she is in her soul too. So it was just this. There's if if that weren't there, I don't think we'd have the sex life that we do, right? So, you, like being with the right person is a huge precursor to any of this, right? Um, the the next thing for me, because I because sexuality was actually pretty difficult for me, that I didn't come to any kind of confidence in this arena until much later in life uh, than most people, bringing presence, right? The ability to, um, and by presence, I mean literally getting out of thought and coming into your senses, right? And so if we think about what sensuality is, often we equate that with sex, and I mean that sexually here, um, but sensuality is literally just like being with your breath, noticing sounds, like being present. And for me, having shame and, and problems with um, feeling confident sexually earlier in my life, being able to turn on presence, right? Being able to smell smells, being able to literally touch and feel breath, that literally allows me to to move into um, a sensual slash sexual feeling, right? So again, not like a, a quick tip, but if people aren't learning how to be present and learning how to uh, carry that into an experience with somebody else, like massaging and really receiving that rather than continually thinking about your taxes or whatever, like we've got to build that muscle of presence, right, to, to make sex really powerful and profound and 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 sensual and, and amazing. Um, it, the last thing, and I'm catching up kind of with what she was sharing about confidence, you know, she's got, she's like super hot on a pole. Up in our bedroom, we've got like a pole. She does pole dancing and stuff. And so getting to watch her spin around a pole and be super sexy and be like in that space of her playing and then learning things, and maybe it's not always the sexiest in the moment, but there's a confidence there, right, that's so hot and amazing. Um, the other thing, and tell her, tell her about the, the confidence of letting us feel hot with other people, right? Yeah, well, what I'll, I'll share also is that there's a sense as a woman of feeling worthy to have the best sex of your life, right? And not settling for average or thinking, well, I'll never have that. That person over there can have it, but maybe not me. And so I think <coughs> I internally at some point in my life 
prior to Rob, I had to own that I was fully worthy of that and that the way that I was going to manifest it was really by connecting to my own body. And, um, you know, it's a really, it's a, a process, but it's about building self-esteem. And I, I believe that the way we build our self-esteem is by creating a relationship where we <coughs> are trusting our word with ourself, right? So if, you know, there's something happening sexually or even in day-to-day -day life with our body where we're not listening to that, that voice, then we're not going to trust ourselves. And so I think that's kind of, you know, for me the first step was trust myself and build my self-esteem. And then from there I can, you know, either do hot things on the pole in our bedroom or fall on my face and still laugh about it, right? Yeah. Um, but there, you know, there's been some moments where I, I remember a specific conversation. Rob and I were walking in New York City, and I was telling him that for whatever reason, I have had attraction to men with bald heads. <laughs> you know, like there's just something about you know, a man with a bald head, sometimes dark skin. And Rob was like, okay, that's everything I'm not, right? Crazy <laughs> <laughs> white hair, you know. And so we were laughing, and, you know, consciously, uh, I know that it's just the outer shell, so I'm madly in love with this man, bald head or not, right? It, and it was more of a joking conversation, but maybe a couple weeks later, I took him to a yoga class, and sure enough, we walk in, and the teacher... <laughs> is sexy voice, bald head, dark skin, right? <laughs> and Like he was turning me on. It was yeah. like, come on, dude. Like, you yeah. know, settle it down, buddy. And so yeah. Rob is like looking over at me, and we just have this little joke going on. But later, when we got home and we were in the shower, we're, we're having sex, <coughs> Rob um, unexpectedly whispered in my ear, something to the effect of it's okay to think of the yoga yeah, teacher like, you right imagine? now like yeah. a man he, he essentially gave me permission to imagine the yoga teacher and the interesting thing was i of course thought the teacher was hot you know i but in the moment we were having sex i wasn't thinking about the yoga teacher i i was in it i was present but the fact that he gave me that permission to explore and to allow those deep subconscious feelings that I, I was probably having somewhere in there, that they, they were okay, it opens up a whole new world. And I think I've said that to you about Jessica Alba after yeah, a, a yeah. hot movie. I was like, you know. And I also, I sent can. her, I sent her, what was happening? I don't know if you were like not feeling that well or something, but I, I ended up sending her an email with like every hot link that I could find to Ryan Gosling possible and I was just like have a great afternoon like I was in Philly and she That's was in Detroit still. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't hard to find them, yeah. right? But but I was just like why don't you why don't you have fun with, you know, your boyfriend now and and just enjoy that. So there's like this permission to flirt, to feel sexy, to uh, feel attractive. Like I want her to feel hot to other people, right? So I don't want her to shut down like looks from other men or anything like that. Like I want her to fully kind of accept those and and I want I want my woman to be wanted, right? I wouldn't want something that everybody's like, I'm not interested in that. Like, so it makes me feel great when she's can shine like that and kind of shake her tail feathers, and, you know? Yeah. And yeah. and I think what it really does is it it creates. I, at first glance, I've actually shared this with some people before that um, probably weren't in the space that were they were ready to hear it. And I I bring that up because they were like, what? Like, not think of your own man? You know? Yeah. And. Um, I, what what ultimately it has done is it's given us more intimacy, more connection. I mean, he's my best friend. There's nothing I haven't shared with him. Of course, I find other people attractive, right? But it doesn't. Into me, you see, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's it's made it's made us closer, and um, it's not something I think we even do all the time. It's just it's a great example of that level of confidence creating the trust and the intimacy, and I like yeah, that. And yeah, yeah. Like the trust required for that, and the trust that it builds between you by allowing it, and you know we we get we can get so shut down in our sexual expression because we're afraid to even have thoughts about somebody else. For your partner to say, hey, it's okay if you have thoughts about that person, even yeah. in that moment, it just really allows you to unleash your sexuality instead of always shutting it down. It. Yeah, I think it was either Annie, you know, we were talking about Evan and Annie, Annie Lala, or Jennifer Russell, who at the intimacy intensive Evan put on four or five years ago, said something like, 
um, your sexual desires mean something good about you. And if you could take that as a given, it's not to mean that you're going to do everything that you desire. We don't eat everything we desire. You know, it's we have the frontal lobe that, yourself, you know, that has us make the choices, yeah. right? Like our partner and staying in the in the parameters or the container of the relationship that feels good for you. But at the same time, letting those desires come up and be expressed and be held. Um, Beautifully modeled, you too. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And and saying that too, there there even have been moments, you know, I uh, being authentic here that um, you know, we've had the conversations where we shared this, and you know, uh, Rob was having like an insecure moment in his in his life that day, right? Mm -hmm. And and he didn't want to receive that. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, there's his, a yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you you play with edges there, right? Yeah. So you you play with edges, and we're we're at a live thing, and somebody's actually hitting on her, and it was it got to a point where I felt it was a little disrespectful, and um and I didn't love that she couldn't feel that in me, and so you know it felt like we were disconnected in that moment. So there's there's a space there for growth and intimacy, and then we get to go leave that and talk about it and go, hey, I, you know, I'm not even sure what the part of that was that didn't feel good, but. I started to not feel good somewhere in there, and and so how can we get back to where we're kind of core? The way I described it to her when we were dating in the very beginning was, I want to feel like I can look across the room at you and know that you're really wanted, and there's all these potential suitors, but I can tell from your look that like these guys don't have a shot, like I'm yours, you know, and and um and so whenever that's there I feel really secure in it and then there's there's times where that might not be there for some reason and you know it's like that that can be a threat in the moment so yeah, yeah. and it's, it's 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 ultimately created a deeper yeah. respect and yeah it's good and a knowing and all that stuff it's yeah it's been great um, yeah, one, I, go ahead uh, one of the things that um, is super valuable tool is just knowing how to talk about that when it comes up and yeah. uh, one of the communication tools we use often is the nonviolent communication. Uh, Dr. Tool. Marshall Rosenberg, are you yeah. familiar with that? Sometimes it's called compassionate communication. Uh -huh. And just being able to um, own you know, the, the way it goes, <laughs> you express some observation that you have that's having you feel uh, that some need is not being met, and then you make a request. So mm -hmm. it's observation, it's, I'm, I'm feeling this way, uh, it's have this need of mine is not being met and my request is this. And every positive emotion you're feeling is based on a need that is not being met. And negative every emotion. yeah, sorry, every yeah. negative emotion. Yeah. And every positive emotion you have is based on a core human need that is being met. So even just expanding your vocabulary on what those core human needs, like you said, I don't even know what didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. But when we expand and then I think there's, you know, nine core um, feelings when your um, needs are being met and eleven for when they're not being met. And so we've just been practicing memorizing those. Of course there's you know, you know, dozens underneath each of those core categories. We have lots of emotions. We're complex human beings, but understanding those core needs um, and connections can be hugely, hugely valuable. Yeah. And I'll just add one little tidbit. Interestingly enough, the category for the need for connectedness has three times as many words for being connected and different ways of being connected than any other of the human needs. Mm. So it really shows that connectedness is a, is a is not just a core human need. It's one of the most important core human needs. Mm. Wow. Yeah, one of the things that's beautiful about that tool, the nonviolent communication tool, is that it's all based in I. You know, I felt this. Mm. This need of mine isn't being met. You're not making the other person wrong for what they did. You're just articulating your experience, which we don't have much practice in doing. Yeah. I call that. I call that staying on. Yeah, I call that staying on your own side of the fence. Right. Nice. Okay. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's you know how everyone's allowed their own feelings and their own experience and all that, and that's actually none of my business. And we're constantly going into other people's business and telling them how you shouldn't have done this and you shouldn't have done. And immediately our defenses go up, right? So it's like it's a much more successful way to communicate when you just say, look, you know, I don't know if I'm right. I don't know what you should do, but here's how I felt. And then they, people then come to your aid, and they're they're much more interested in in uh, helping the change, right? So. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Great. Now, how about this um, toolbox? Yeah, we're yeah. interested because we have a we actually have a fights clean sex dirty toolkit. It's this really cool fuchsia and black uh, canvas like tool bag. 
think Bob's just going to grab it, actually. And it has all sorts of props and toys in it for keeping the fights clean and the sex dirty from, you know, flags for a yellow flag on the play. You know, we, we have this whole fun toolkit. And we, we, we haven't put them out there yet. This is just one we made for ourselves at home. But as soon as I saw your notes on Toolbox, oh, this is in the toolkit. You don't have the toolkit with you. Maybe we left that at home. But can you see these? I get that. You, you changed the screen there, Raj? Yeah, we were uh, we were shopping at uh, Ross or something and looking for some weights. We <laughs> saw these things. And we're like, we have to have them. We have to have them. They're and even our clothes. We have monster hats in there, so if the fight starts getting ugly, we have to actually put on the monster hats. So now wow. it's like, fly you, I Fly yada. <laughs> wow. We like props. We like props. But tell us about your toolbox. Yeah, it, one thing is... Uh, texting, we're really good. I have a very dirty mind. Yeah. I, I have my whole life. <laughs> it just always goes wherever. And um, so I think that that's also a really great tool that we use regularly of just quick little texts or um, poems or we send music here or there and... Yeah, so before, like, if we're trying to get, actually, this is how I won you over. Let's be clear. <laughs> Let's be clear. Uh, this is where we tipped it from, like, oh, we're business whatevers. I, I went to, like, you know, almost hypnotic texting, if you will. I, I started to drop words, and this is really hardcore tips here. I started to drop words like imagine. And he basically NLP'd me. Yeah, NLP'd me. Yeah. NLP That's flexing. neuro linguistic programming for those who haven't <laughs> heard that term before. But you're inserting these keywords. Yeah. It's it. Well, it's totally. We ended up printing uh, as a gift to her. I printed our whole text kind of love affair, right? Which. Oh. Which began the whole thing. We should we should have brought it down. It's upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Um. And I really started. I mean, I I. I tipped over into, it was like we were talking and I was like, you know, do you work out or something? And she told me like she was actually sore then and I, I started to describe like giving her a massage, right? And then she was kind of like, oh my, like what's happening here? And then, you know, and we took it further and it became this very uh, involved, you know, thing. And then from then on, there was all this really sexy uh, texting that was happening between us. And so, you know, if you imagine like how to get it hot before it's happening, like how to get somebody out of their work mind and all that, you can send like a nasty little, you know, like mm -hmm. you're so fucking hot and that thing, or I've been looking at your, you know, I've been looking at your booty all day. I can't wait to get my hands on you. And even if you can't do it right then, you can start to like set it up, right? And 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 move the mind, right? Move the mind from this distraction and stuff into like what's happening. And then I'll straight up heckle her, right? Like like five minutes later, she'll get another one and then another one, and you know, and it's. Um, I remember we said she was dating other people in the beginning. Um, she would tell me, like, oh, I'm going to go on a date with, you know, Steve so-and-so. And I'm like, all right, have fun. And then in the middle of her date, I'd be like, um, why are you with, like, boring, Mc, you know, Borerson? Like, you should be hanging out with me. And I would just start kind of getting in there and, and, and playing with her attention. And so uh, there's, there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do uh, with that. And because she's got such a wonderful, dirty mind, she usually meets me right there, and we have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. The the other things, um, you know, when uh, you had said your neck is your spot, you know, I totally am the same way. You know, all he has to do is walk up behind me and breathe or kiss my neck, and I'm pretty much melting. <laughs> and I do that a lot. Like she'll be in, she'll be in the kitchen, and I will just kind of come up behind her and 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 grab her and kind of hold her and invite. You know, a moment, right? And then I'll whisper Probably something. Uh, mastering mini seductions. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just I'll whisper something really, really, Moments. yeah, really hot and nice in her ear. Uh, I'll take a second and, and nibble and, and kiss her neck and just bring her into a sensual moment, right? And uh, and and then maybe back up and smack her ass or something, you know, like. Yeah. Get it, get, you know what I mean? Like. We like yeah. to say, in fact, someone texted us this the yeah, the other day that they were thinking of us because one of our expressions is a little ass grab goes a long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they did that with their partner and they texted us. They're like, thinking of you. It's just so funny. <laughs> yeah. So funny. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Renee will dirty talk. I'll, you know, text back. We, um, I, you know, there's a lot about massage. So, you know, for me, getting her to, like, lay back and relax. So if you actually think, like, the toolbox, right? Um, when we met, and maybe, uh, you know, we're just, I'm, I'm going to say all kinds of stuff, I guess. Um, 
you know, I bought specific toys and tools and kind of brought them, right? And so we, I'd fallen madly in love with her. I'm already in love. We hadn't been together yet, and um, and so I kind of showed up. We met in New York, right? She was going to be in New York. I talked her out of going to a conference. She's like going to be in this conference, and I'm on Skype going, well, you're going to be in a conference here, and oddly enough, I'm going to be in a hotel, like, right here. What do you <laughs> want to do, right? Yeah. And and she's like, damn it, and I go, just see if you can get your money back, right? And so she ended up spending three days with me instead of going to this conference, and uh, and I brought a toolkit with me, and so it had, you know, a blindfold. Um, it had, you know, massage oils. It had uh, a bunch of toys and, and, and things that are fun uh, because that's just a phenomenal addition, right? If you're massaging and you can bring, you know, uh, some vibrator into it or something like that, I get to, like, put a blindfold on her and lay her down and allow her to, number one, like, let the, um, you know, if you take away the visual, um, it allows you to kind of connect in with all the rest of the sensuality that's possible, right? It's it's such a big part of our brain um, that it just lets her kind of relax into this dark space of just feeling everything I'm going to do. So, you know, I grab an ice cube and I kind of drip it on parts and then I make her wait for a little while and then, you know, I'll tickle her and then and then it'll be a massage and then I'll ask her to turn over and, you know, and the whole time it's it's letting her be adored. It's taking away the responsibility of, like, we have to compete for senses and it's almost like one at a time, allowing her to just be there. Um, and so being able to play in that space, um, you know, that's probably not booty before brekkie, right? Booty before brekkie is just let's <laughs> have some sex it's and get like to it. kind of like you were you were saying, if there's a window of a yeah. few hours on a Sunday, you know, that... Then it's like Dr. Crazy. Scott's going to bring out his bag and we're going <laughs> to... Yeah. I feel that. <laughs> and um, being able to return the favor yeah. for your partner, you know, so that way they have that opportunity to you know, feel completely loved and adored and touched and, and yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, it's so great. It brings yeah. a lot of play and creativity to it as well. <laughs> you know, we get stuck into these patterns and, you know, sex can sometimes just get the same old, same old. And uh, I, I love this notion. Say, same with us. We have a toolkit. And mm -hmm. if you have all these things in one place, it makes it really easy to actually use them at the yeah. moment or if you have a planned moment. Uh, it, it, we also put in different ambiance things, you know, you, yeah. uh, candles and incense, and like you said, oils, things of that nature. Yeah. It's awesome. We're, we're moving to a, a new house, so it doesn't have a place yet, but I told Raj, I want to get a pedestal, and I want to, in our new house, put the kit on the pedestal, so it's always <laughs> sitting there invisible and ready to go and, and inviting, right? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. Awesome. Well, so much fun, so much fun. We want to tell people a little bit about how they can learn more about what both of you have to offer. Um, would you like to tell people about uh, what's on the different uh, websites we have listed here for you guys? Yeah, and if you have anything coming up soon that people should have on their radar. We've got it on the slide here, your URLs, but is there anything you want to point out specifically? Yeah, you can check out ReneeHeigl.com for some... I have a couple of free programs, one on how to break up with your addiction to sugar that's coming up pretty soon, and then another one that is connecting to loving your life. So, yeah, enjoy. Love your life yeah, Love Your Life Academy. Yeah. That's love Your Life cool. Academy, lovely. And, and how about you, Rob? Yeah, so if you go to robscott.com, there's all kinds of free stuff that you don't even have to sign up for. There's a great coaching course uh, if they do want to sign up for something, and then... Um, if you want to check out uh, coaching with me or even my identity shifting stuff, there's a way to get, um, you know, like a, a session with me to, to talk and see what's possible. Uh, there's a section that says want coaching, and they can go through that process there. And the identity shifting site is uh, in this moment actually uh, being rebuilt, but there's a space there where you can enter information to get more, uh, more on what identity shifting is and what that might be able to do for you. Great. Fantastic. I want to check out both of those things <laughs> as I'm sitting there with my sugar addiction in the evening. And yeah. I love what you do, both of you. That's fantastic, Scott. Your, uh, Rob, your information on identity shifting, it's, it's so critical to how we approach life. You know, we see the world through our own eyes, and it uh, sounds like you have some really great technology to, to shift that. 
Thank you, yeah. And I, and I love that neither one of your, what you're up to is specifically about relationship, but both are really at the root of relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, being willing to dismantle the, this identity that you've created and invent yourself newly, and being able to love yourself so that you can attract that partner that loves you and that you can freely love them back, because it's hard to really love someone truly if you don't know first how to love yourself. So it's, you're, you're laying this super important foundational work for people. I can see why, Renee, you were saying that when when people start working with you, they, they end up getting into new relationships that they just didn't think were possible before. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, let's tell you a little bit about some of the What's things next? that we have available for you. Uh, you can get our free relationship reset kit by going to the URL shown here. Uh, it consists of three awesome tools to help reset your relationship, whether you're wanting, you know, something's really lacking for you in your relationship and you really want to have that shift, or if you want to go from good to great in your relationship. Or awesome to epic, I like to say. Uh -huh. <laughs> we have our uh, Relationship Reset Tips four-part mini email course that comes as part of this package. We also have our beautifully created uh, free guidebook on how to keep the fights clean and the sex dirty. It's a shortened version of our ebook. Yeah, it's just laid out really easy. You know, we talked about a few tips tonight, you know, booty before Becky was ours, but there's, you know, a couple dozen tips in there that you can really glance over and pull out the ones that are most um, suited for you. And then you'll also get access to our weekly Fights Clean Sex Dirty TV shows and access to our replays. So you can get that by going to this URL here. Mm -hmm. That'll also be in the comments window. And no cost to any of those. That's just our thank you for joining into the community here. And we'll keep you up to date on everything that's going on with relationship fun and games. Like tomorrow night, we have one more live opportunity. And on the calls on Thursday nights, on the webinars on Thursdays, we stay on until you get off the call. So if you have questions and you want to have those answered, and the webinar is called The Number One Reason Relationships Fail and What You Can Do About It. There's two core reasons that relationships fail. We'll tell you what both of them are on the show tomorrow night. So if you want to be a fabulous fighter, as I said before, save being nasty for your sex life. There's no room for that in your uh, arguing relationship where your halo when it comes to fighting and your devil horns when it comes to getting it on. And just creating an environment that you're turned on and excited by each other and by life again. So that's uh, coming up tomorrow night. And then next week, same time as this show tonight, Wednesday at 5.30, we're going to have Amy and Tony. Amy Segretti and Tony. I ha um, Tony is her beloved, but I don't know how to say his last name. Baccia Galupo. <laughs> we got a very fun sounding, sounding name here, but looking forward to diving in with them. They actually have a whole kit that they've put together on um, how to take the charge out of an argument. And we'll be focusing specifically on how to keep the fights clean during when you're in the heat of it. And some great tips here on how to shorten that time of being in argument to get something out of that argument so that you can up-level your relationship from the arguments that occur. And when we say shorten, we mean like end in an instant. We've got a couple of great tips for you. We'll point out some tips that we've talked about in the past. But uh, whether you're working on keeping the fights clean or the sex dirty, thanks for joining us at Fights Clean Sex Dirty TV. We hope that you have a playful, peaceful, passionate relationship. We're here to support you in any way we can. And feel free to reach out to us, write us, let us know what you want to talk more about so we can make sure that the content we're giving you is exactly exactly what's most helpful to your relationship now. And thank you so much, Rob and Renee, for joining yes. us tonight. Such a blast having you on the show tonight. It's thank been you. so fun. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. We hope to, hope to do this again soon. All right, good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a good evening.